Now let us look at the factors. What were the factors which made Africans from Nyasaland to migrate, uh, to go to uh, find a work elsewhere, that is in Southern Rhodesia, Northern Rhodesia, as well as uh, in South Africa? What were the factors which made Africans from uh, Nyasaland to go and find work? So what were the push factors? What drove them out of uh, Nyasaland? Number one was that uh, there were unfavorable conditions in the country which made uh, the laborers to seek work abroad. Uh, also, we here we are saying that uh, there was loss of land as a result of uh, alienation. Remember, we said that most of the good land it was taken by uh, the traders and the settlers and the missionaries. So it, mean, it meant that those who lost their land, they decided to seek employment elsewhere because they were pushed outside the good land. And also taxation policy forced the Africans to migrate uh, uh, and seek for employment, which was in short supply in Nyasaland. So there was the, the introduction of uh, the tax, hard tax, remember the hard tax. Uh, whereby each adult 14 years above was supposed to pay the taxes. As a result, things were not okay. Then they wanted to go and find money for the tax. So work in Yasaran was not there. Hence, they were migrating uh, outside to look for that employment for the taxation. Also, the Western education which Africans received in the mission schools, it caused them to migrate to seek for employment elsewhere. So those who were educated who attended the mission schools, they were migrating uh, to South Africa, to Southern Rhodesia, so that they find work after uh, they got that education. And this was true of the Tonga, that is uh, from Katabe. Uh, from the northern region of Nyasaland. So most of them, they, after they got education from the mission schools, they wanted now, the next thing was to go and find work elsewhere. And also lack of uh, produce uh, market. So the things that they were uh, farming, they uh, were farming and those access things that they could not use they had no market to sell. As a result, then they would say farming is useless. What if we just go elsewhere and find uh, the work or employment? So those are the push factors. What were the, uh, we looked at the push factors uh, that pushed them out of Mao. But what about the pull factors? What attracted them now outside there? So these are external factors which uh, uh, people of Nyasaland considered favorable and attracted them. So number one, there was the availability of uh, more attract attractive wages in industries. So they were attracted by the wages in the industries and also a uh, freedom of movement in the workplaces. So they were able to move in the workplaces there and also returning workers brought home attractive goods such as bicycles, blankets, shoes, and suits. So those who had gone before, when they came back, they were bringing in uh, many uh, things, manufactured things. As a result, it attracted many people to say, let me also go there and, uh, and buy these things. So this had a demonstration effect on the people who needed uh, such consumer uh, goods. The other factor was uh, the wages from northern and southern Rhodesia. Uh, though low were better than those uh, from Nyasland. So when we compare the wages uh, of the people who are working uh, to the whites in Nyasland and Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia, in Nyasland, the wages were very low. Hence, uh, people were attracted to say, all right, here I'm working uh, to the whites, but here what they are giving me is peanuts as compared to what our friends are getting in Southern Rhodesia and Northern Rhodesia. Hence, people, they migrated uh, to uh, those countries. 
and also traveling abroad was associated with prestige so those who traveled who had traveled uh, outside the country uh, they were uh, taken as so prestigious people so uh, they wanted people wanted to be uh, to have that uh, to be associated with prestige to say they are the people who know something at least uh, they know something in their lives so the districts that affected the, that were affected by labor migration in Nyasaland included Nkata Bay, Adowa, Nsanje, Deza, Chikwawa, Ncheu, and Mzimba. So these districts they were greatly affected by that labor migration. Now let us look at the challenges. What were the challenges that African faced in the mines? and plantations in South Africa and Northern Rhodesia as well as the Southern Rhodesia. So the first one is that Africans were provided with the poor food and accommodation. Poor food and accommodation. Secondly, uh, owners treated Africans harshly uh, in the mines. So they were using the four language uh, which we were using there in the mines and the N and any indiscipline was punishable by beating, exhaustion uh, during the mining and was considered a uh, laziness and punishable as well. So we see to it as well to say exhaustion du during the mining. They had to say someone says, ah, I am tired. Then they could say this one is, lady, uh, is a lazy person. So that one was punished. So you are not supposed to say I am, I am tired. No. So they were like that so th there was that ill treatment and also they were paid very low wages as compared to the work done so as you can see to it you are not supposed to say i am tired and at the end of the day you are paid uh, uh, less less uh, money so you see to uh, it that they were really big big challenges that they were facing also uh, in the workplaces, conditions were very poor, usually overcrowding, many people working at the same place, and also poor safety conditions in the mines, which were prone to accidents due to uh, loose or fading, uh, falling rocks, or also earthquakes, and poorly constructed tunnels in the mines, which easily collapsed. So many people died there because of the safety conditions were very poor as well. And also prison-like uh, way of life for the Africans. So Africans in the working places, especially in the mines, they were treated like prisoners. So they were not allowed to move outside their compounds. So you can see uh, that one. So they are not to go out to socialize. No, each and every time they are supposed to be at the working place there. It, you are supposed to be at work or at home like that, not outside. So the absence of wives also led to homosexuality so you see to it that wives were left back here and the people were just alone there in southern rhodesia northern rhodesia and it resulted that they were uh, they started practicing homosexuality so labor migration created a serious a serious labor shortage in nyasaland especially in the shira in the Shire Highlands, where the whites also opened some farms there. So many people were flocking down to South Africa, leaving uh, a gap here in the Shire Highlands. So there, were, uh, there was a shortage of labor in the uh, Shire Highlands. But despite the protest from the planters, uh, the colonial government encouraged labor migration because it was a source of revenue. Just as we have said that everyone who was going out to look for employment in Southern Rhodesia, Northern Rhodesia, South Africa, uh, the colonial government was charging on each and every uh, person who goes out. So the, the money was paid by the bureau, those, the Mtandizi and the like, the Wenera, they were paying for each and every person who was going out. So intervention, made by the colonial government to regulate the flow of labor and uh, safeguard the welfare of uh, the labor. So that's what we have to uh, look at now to say what were those interventions that were made by 
uh, the colonial government, in order to safeguard or regulate uh, labor, uh, migration or welfare of the uh, laborers. So uh, that is uh, what we are going to look at. That is now to uh, look at the attempts to check labor migration in Nyasaland. So number one, the colonial government issued permits to recognized labor recruiting agencies. So those recruiting agencies, the Wenera and the like, the Mtandizi, they were given uh, the permits or the permission to say you are the only ones who are supposed to employ people here. And also it fixed annual quota recruits for each company. So each company was not just coming here any time to recruit people. They had a quota, a limit to say, per year you are supposed to recruit so much. And also it monitored the conditions of mi migrant laborers in the workplaces, uh, such as accommodation, food, as well as wages. So the colonial government did not just send people outside, they were also going there to see how their people were living, are the, uh, the working conditions good? What about the food? What about the wages? Are they uh, okay? And also, uh, it entered into agreements with the, the Southern and Northern Rhodesia administrators. So the colonial government as well, it uh, entered into agreement with the, the Southern Rhodesia as well as Northern Rhodesia uh, governments there to say, our people are there working, please they have to be taken care of. So they entered into that agreement. So the agreement may, uh, mainly centered on two crucial issues. Number one, each migrant labor was to sign a two-year contract to check the tendency uh, of not returning home. So each and every two years, they were also renewing that contract, re renewing the contract. So the contract was signed for two years. Yeah, so uh, the recruited uh, laborers were saying that they were provided with transport to and from home. So those were the two agreements that were uh, done by the Nyasaland government uh, with the two Rhodesia governments. Now let us look at the impact of labor migration on Nyasaland. What impact did that labor migration have on uh, Nyasaland? So we'll start with the positive impacts. Number one, it provided employment to many Africans. So many Africans, they found uh, work or employment. So those from Nyasaland, they earned a reputation of being hardworking and good performers in the mines, as well as in the plantations, as well as domestic uh, hands, despite the uh, challenges they were facing. So uh, Nyasaland, or Africans from Nyasaland, they were recommended so much to say they were hard workers. They were hard workers despite being exposed to very poor conditions. And also, the colonial government, uh, it got a lot of revenue out of the labor export. Just as we have mentioned, we said that everyone was going out uh, on each and every one, the government was benefiting on that one. So the money was used for administrative expenses and the development. So uh, it was the benefit again for the colonial government. And again, it, uh, there was the spread of cash uh, income in rural areas. So people now started to use cash economy. They started to use money now, uh, replacing the exchange, just exchanging of goods. Also another impact was that the rural economies diversified migrant labor when they returned uh, home and opened a number of activities, uh, for example, the maize mills. So the rural economies, uh, it uh, diversified. The reason was that the migrant laborers, when they returned, they opened up uh, some of the activities or trade activities like the maize mills, the shops and the like. And those who returned again, they enhanced the introduction of foreign goods like the blankets, uh, musical in instruments, as well as the tools like holes and many others. So those who came back from work that is in northern and southern Rhodesia, they 
uh, introduced new things here they which they brought they brought new things and also there was the spread of new language in Nyasaland as Ritanese could speak foreign languages such as Shona, Remba, they were also speaking Koza as well as the Zulu. So uh, those languages again were introduced in Nyasaland. Not only that, uh, planters, uh, those farmers and employers uh, within Nyasaland, they raised their wages to attract local people, hoping to discourage them from going away to work. So we see to it that the, uh, here there was a great impact to say uh, those farmers who were here, they looked that the, they saw to it that people were just flocking down to South Africa as well as to uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe. So they raised their wages to say, all right. Uh, let us raise the wages to match with it, uh, maybe northern Rhodesia, southern Rhodesia, so that people are discouraged to say, why should I go out when also uh, here I'm going to earn the same. Another impact was there was the improved agricultural skills. Agricultural skills also improved. And also there was the building of good houses. So people, when they returned, they uh, saw uh, the life outside there. And when they came back, they started constructing better or good houses. And also some people who returned from the native association, formed the native association or independent churches. So those who returned, others, they started to make the groupings to say, right, let us uh, make a union to make the African voice uh, be heard by the British or the colonial government. And uh, others, they also formed the independent churches uh, they are independent churches, they also formulated such churches. What about the negative impact of uh, that a migration? Negative impact. The negative impacts, number one was that uh, it led to the underdevelopment in most parts of uh, the country. As most energetic and innovative people, they went outside the country uh, to look for work. So it is estimated that between 25 to 35% of those people who went out uh, never, uh, uh, they never came back. Those uh, uh, migrants, uh, they never came back. About 25 to 35%, they never came back. That they died there, and uh, others, even after work, they decided to stay there permanently. And also, it led to the stagnation of rural uh, economies as farming closed uh, solidly uh, was done by women. So it shows here that the uh, men, those who were energetic, they went out. And as that one was not enough, also we see to it in terms of agriculture, it was left in the hands of women and children, and they could not manage maybe uh, to uh, to cultivate maybe bigger areas or bigger portions. So with that, then it led to that stagnation in the rural economies, just as we have said that the economy of Nyasaland depended on agriculture. So those people who uh, farmed little, it meant that the economy was staggering as well. Another negative impact of that labor migration is that it increased poverty, as not every migrant uh, sent money home to assist his family, uh, a move deliberately influenced by the white settlers. So we see to it that the uh, people uh, when they went out, uh, they were not sending money back home here. So it increased poverty. Uh, there was poverty as well. So, for example, Europeans, they encouraged the brewing of beer and uh, prostitution to save the African migrants during the leisure time. So what was happening like in those mines or when they were out in northern Rhodesia and southern Rhodesia, the Europeans, they allowed the brewing of beer. People were brewing beer there, especially uh, during the month end when the people were having the money. So uh, they were brewing beer so that people, they uh, consume all their salaries there. Hence, they were not sending anything back home. And also, not only that, the Europeans also there, they encouraged prostitution to say, all right, uh, women maybe from uh, somewhere, they were coming there 
are usually maintained so that they save those men there with their salaries. As a result, people, they forgot home. So this made Africans not to accumulate enough wealth and send or to send and carry uh, when going home or returning home. So this made them to renew their contracts. So just as we have said that the contract, it was for two years. They were signing the contracts for two years. So uh, because they, at the end of the two years, each and every month end, the money ended or was depleted on BA or prostitution, then at the end of two years, you find that someone has not accumulated anything. So it was a deliberate move by the whites to say, all right, let these people uh, be here all the time so that they just uh, renew their contracts each and every two years they renew those contracts. Another negative impact was that it led to disintegration of families since only men are left to go and work in, uh, in South Africa, Southern Rhodesia as well as Northern Rhodesia, leaving their families behind. So besides that, it led also to immorality among the married couples. So also men married foreign wives while wives married other husbands. So that's what happened as well. When men went out, uh, they stayed there for quite long. Then here, women, they also uh, got married. And when men were there, they also married the foreign wives there. And it made, uh, it, that's why we're saying it led to uh, the breaking or disintegration of families. The families, they broke apart. And also uh, another negative impact was that it led to the spread of new diseases of which Nyasaran had no proper medication. For example, uh, the spread of syphilis and gonorrhea. So these diseases in Nyasaran, uh, medication was not there. So when men were coming back, they could bring back those diseases like syphilis, gonorrhea and spread them here. As a result, uh, people uh, were in deep trouble. And also, it led to the spread of new languages like Shona, Zuru, Ndewere, Wemba, Nyanja, uh, which hampered some of the local languages. So those who returned, uh, they were fond of speaking those languages. As a result, it was like a confusion of languages when they came back. So uh, to this far, we have come to the end of this topic. So it has been really a wonderful topic where we are looking at the economic developments up to independence in Central Africa. So we have seen how the economies were in Central Africa, like in Nyasaland, we said it was based on agriculture. In Northern and Southern Rhodesia, there were mines there. So we have looked at a number of issues uh, in this topic uh, that we are supposed to know. So just as usual, I'm supposed to leave you with the, the work to do. So here is the work that you are supposed to do. There are a few questions. You have to go through these questions. So go through these questions and uh, you have to uh, do it as quickly as possible. So you study these questions and get a pen and paper and you answer this question. So there are a number of questions here. You take your time and go through and attempt them all. So they go up to 10 structured, structured questions uh, that are here. So do them. So all the 10 questions, you are supposed to attempt them. So uh, never jump any question, try because they are almost straightforward questions. But question number 11, it's an essay. This is an essay where you are supposed to attempt the essay. So write a very good essay on this question at number 11. Discuss the impact of labor migration on Nyasaran. Very straightforward question. So after you are done, as usual, you have to make sure that you forward your answers to this uh, WhatsApp number or the email address that is just here uh, for you. So just do that one and forward it to me. I also uh, respond or give you feedback promptly. So the next uh, next topic that we are going to look at is the, uh, the Central African Federation. This is a very, very wonderful topic that you are uh, we are going to experience in the next 
uh, topic that is the, the Central African Federation. So that is the federation, we talk of the federation, the amalgamation, the union of Central Africa. So what happened? So it is really a good, good topic. So you know what? The topic is also already on DVD. All you can do, pick up that phone, call me, and immediately I send you this topic. So until that time, thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.